Kirkby. And now after a break of up to a year, America's covert war in Yemen is up and running again. Armed drones and fighter jets have hit a number of suspected militant targets. Well, the increase in strikes comes as the Yemeni government, Washington's ally, is clinging on to power in the face of an uprising. Well, for more on this, let's talk to Sarah Flounders from the U.S.-based International Action Center, which opposes American wars abroad. Thank you very much for being with us tonight. Now, given the uh, growing power vacuum in Yemen, Washington says its military campaign helps keep al-Qaeda militants from consolidating power. Now, is that a fair reason for this U.S. war? No, this is just another criminal, illegal, absolutely, it's, uh, it's lawlessness on such a scale of hypocrisy. The idea of using fighter jets and drone attacks, and according to yesterday's New York Times, this has been going on for weeks. Uh, at the very time that the U.S. is using the U.N. Security Council, the International Criminal Court, to bring charges against other countries for terrorism, and it is clearly exposed in international terrorism itself. Uh, in Yemen, and of course in sabotage teams in Syria, and in bombing of Libya, not to mention the devastating wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. In Yemen, it is to protect a complete 33-year dictatorship of, of Saleh, who's now, for um, uh, health reasons in Saudi Arabia, an effort to protect his regime, potentially bring him back. And it's being used against the people's movement. Anyone that the U.S. fears is a threat to them is now being labeled as al-Qaeda, and it's open season in terms of attacks and, and bombs and drone attacks on any number of different resistance organizations. Well, Sarah, uh, the U.S. says that its jets recently killed an important al-Qaeda operative. Now, isn't that something to be happy about? There's absolutely no way of knowing that any of this is true. Who's hit, who's targeted, and what their political agenda is. All of this is only coming from the Pentagon, declaring that forces are al-Qaeda. And we've seen again and again in Afghanistan and Pakistan where they claim such things, and it's then found to be a whole village of civilians. It's found to be 10, 15, 18, 20 children, uh, and so on. So this recent claim that they've uh, struck an al-Qaeda leadership, no one knows. Okay, well, we've already seen protests in Pakistan and Afghanistan after U.S. aerial attacks killed civilians. Now, the campaign in Yemen was stopped a year ago because of concerns of poor intelligence leading to bungled missions and civilian deaths. Now, what's changed now that they're back there? Well, really, this also shows the limits of U.S. weapons, because despite uh, the years of past attacks in Yemen and these attacks in Afghanistan and Pakistan and so on, a people's movement, a, an enormous people's movement in, in Yemen has upseated uh, the dictatorship. There's an effort, as I say, to bring that back, to reinforce again. But the, the people's movement has proven to be a more powerful force against the most sophisticated weapons used in an absolutely lawless and criminal way. As I say, open season, strike where they want, declare everyone is al-Qaeda while, while attacking villages, cities, uh, rural centers. And yet none of this has stopped the movement in Yemen. It has not been able to stop the resistance in Afghanistan okay. or the so growing let's anger in Pakistan. Look at the, uh, let's look at the latest development. President Saleh left the country after being severely wounded in an attack on his compound. Now, is the U.S. stepping up its campaign to prevent the opposition from gaining power in his absence? There is a power vacuum there. It's absolutely being used as a way of stopping the opposition forces around the country from consolidating themselves and by attacking them in many different cities. Uh, and when you think also of the years of U.S. military support to this regime, it's not only the drone attacks and the jet fighter planes, but it is decades of support for the government in Yemen, both through the U.S. and through Saudi Arabia. And yet it has not uh, been able to stop a people's movement from arising. All right. Thank you very much. That was Sarah Flounders from the U.S.-based International Action Center. Thank you.